Welcome to Electra Online. Probably one of the most significant features of the planet Jupiter are those bands across the surface. They're very, very visible. Saturn has them as well, but not nearly as visible as Jupiter does. And the coloration, of course, is unique. Now, if you take a look at this picture, you can see the difference in colors. You see the brighter bands, you see the darker bands. And so those are now uh, divided into what we call zones and belts. Now, zones are the brighter band and belts are the darker bands around the planet. There's a total of about 16 of these bands around the planet. Now, when you look at a picture of Saturn you're trying to count, you're going to have a hard time coming up at 16 because they don't always show themselves in that particular fashion and they do change over time over the period of years and decades some bands come in and disappear and come back but over time it looks like there are about 16 different bands and they're usually associated with 16 different wind speeds and wind directions they tend to kind of move in the opposite direction to one another but that's not entirely true either but in general they tend to go in opposite directions and we'll look at some more details of which band goes to where but we now want to kind of look at the layout of the structure and of course here's a picture of it and this is kind of a bigger picture so we can see so notice that on this side we have the belts on that side we have the zones and we start with the north polar region which has the darker color so it's considered like a belt and then we have the south polar region which has a dark color so therefore it's considered a belt now notice that zones tend to be upwelling regions and belt belt tend to be down uh, pushed regions so we see this upwelling and downwelling kind of what we see in the sun we have the different uh, locations of the sun where we have atmosphere coming up and falling back down but here it's done more in terms of bands around the planet and those zones and belts are also associated with predominant winds in different directions so these are down downwelling regions they're called belts they're darker in color harder to see because of course they don't get as much sunlight up there and down below they're kind of uh, darker for that reason as well and then when we go below that notice from the north polar belt region belt we have what we call the north north temperate zone then we have the north north temperate belt the north temperate zone and the north temperate belt of course the word temperate is related to the region of the earth where we have a temperate climate near the uh, you know, below the uh, Arctic Circle and so in the same way they call that the North North and North Temperate Zones and Belts. Then below that we have the North Tropical Zone and the North Equatorial Belt and then down the middle of the planet we have a big equatorial zone where the winds can be quite high but notice also that in the middle of that zone there's a tiny little region where we have differential wind direction and that's called the equatorial band but it's very very thin inside the equatorial zone Then below that we have the equatorial belt and within the equatorial belt we have the great red spot with which uh, tends to rotate well not tend it does rotate in a counterclockwise oh wait a minute yeah counterclockwise direction uh, notice that the material tends to go in one direction and uh, the uh, spot will go in the other direction. We'll take a look at that in a little bit more detail. There's great little videos on the, on the internet as well that you can see and we're going to maybe put some of those clips in there so you can kind of see the movement of the different zones and belts. Below the, the equatorial belt we have the south tropical zone, we have the south temperate belt, the south temperate zone, the south south temperate belt, and the south south temperate zone, and finally we're down at the south polar region. A total of 16 identifiable belts and zones around the planet that all move kind of at either different speeds in the same direction, in some cases even at opposite speeds. So it's quite fascinating to see that. And the, it, the sustainment of that is quite amazing. For example, the Great Red Spot, we know that we've been observing that for over 300 years already, and it's still there. It does change in size. Lately, the last maybe 40 years or so, it has shrunk in size quite a bit, but it's still there, and who knows, it might grow again. We really don't know. Uh, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on it and see what happens in the future. But that gives you at least a good indication of the difference between zones and belts, the fact that there's 16 regions that can be classified as such, and that are associated with predominant wind directions in different directions. Matter of fact, 
the equatorial zones, I think we have wind speeds there uh, well in excess of 200, almost 300 kilometers per hour. Um, that's faster than a bullet train. And yeah, it's uh, quite amazing. And they're very sustained. Those wind speeds are very sustained around the planet. So we'll give you some more detail about that later, but there gives you a basic concept of the belts and zones of Jupiter.